Okay, so the main point of this video is showing you the differences between the three row and the four row radiator setup. They're not completely different, but they, they're not the same either. Okay, this is a Monte Carlo, so just ignore the fan shroud. If you ever don't know what you have, get a flashlight. One, two, three rows. Just under two inches, this part. Now are all three row radiators for small blocks? Probably so. The old one is out of an LS6 car. And the black one over there, it's the Desert Cooler, uh, $530 in OPGI. And it's supposed to be aftermarket improved design, but they're basically the same dimension. So if you're looking at the Desert Cooler, uh, that's the biggest one they make. It's identical to the trans I mean to the radiator that came off of the of an LS6 uh, 454 Chevelle. So this one is 2.7 inches so just showing you that the four row is a four row one two three four row and now this video is mainly for 68 to 72 okay so in the magazine they have three and four bolt I've never seen a three bolt, but uh, this would be for a three core radiator. And if you have one for a three core radiator, I'm gonna show you what the four core rad radiator one looks like and how to modify yours for a four core. The only difference is right here on the driver's side. They have this corner cut out of them. And uh, I custom made a piece, so I'm about to paint it and weld it on there, but you can see how when you buy the four core radiator cover, it's going to look like that. The reason I made mine is because it was $40 cheaper, and then I made this in about 10 minutes. So The other side's fine, you don't have to do nothing to that side, but on this side, you can see where I cut the piece. Uh, the problem is that the four core, okay, and that's another thing you're gonna have to buy. You're gonna have to buy these support bushings or whatever they're called. They're like $25. Uh, see, they're bigger. Okay, so you can see right here that they hit. Okay, so that's why they just cut that out put this back in there so now it should make a little bit more sense on why I get to cut that piece out because it won't fit and then this thing kind of squishes up so they welded that piece on there that doesn't allow this to move okay so that kind of explains what that is because I didn't know what the hell this was at first okay so that kind of explains what that's all about so on the driver's side, uh, you may have, you'll have to, you might have to make a modification right here. This front clip is off a small block car, and you can see that we're gonna have to cut this. So, okay, so we're just gonna cut that out. Two little cuts right here and right here, so this can fit in there. The other side fits fine. So, okay, so real quick, the things that hold the fan shroud on. Just have like a three eighths uh, screws like that going through it. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and check the parts before we put the radiator in. Modified core support. One clip, two clips. This fits in there. I'm gonna show it being installed. Clip this. I clip the bottom of the fan shroud on those two clips.
Okay, now check that out. There is a problem. For some reason, the fan shroud sets too low. If you simply just pull it up, it starts to hit. See how you got the, the equal uh, distances right here all around the fan. So, so I'm gonna have to modify that. The only thing I can think of is I do have energy suspension motor mounts, which I don't know. But this thing isn't been up or anything, so just letting you know, man, uh, you might have an issue right there. Don't freak out. Other than that, got a freaking awesome radiator in here. Okay, well that's about it. I just wanted to kind of give you an idea what to expect.